Dr. Salzman, thanks so much for being with me today. Thanks for having me. It's been a great conference. Great. Can you tell me a little bit about how, as a biochemist, you use big data in your work? So actually, my PhD is in statistics, so even though I am a biochemist and molecular biologist, I'm also a statistician and You've computational got it all going on. biologist, <laughs> yes. Um, and so my research really uses and hinges on developing statistical methods and analyzing large data sets to try to better understand the repertoire of RNAs that are expressed by cells. And why is this important for my grandma at home? Why do we care about RNAs so much? It's so small. <laughs> uh, well, it can be small. It can be very large, actually. Um, but Relatively speaking. <laughs> you know, one of, the, one of the, I think, intuitive reasons to care about it is that if you look at the DNA in your cells, and compare the DNA in your eye to the DNA in your heart, it's going to be essentially identical in its sequence composition, its ACGT ordering and um, sort of the alphabet it spells out. Whereas the repertoire of RNAs between, that are expressed from the DNA, basically um, copied from the DNA, is dramatically different between your heart and your eye and essentially between every two cells in your body. So it's like the instruction manual is the same throughout your body, but what they're choosing to make from that instruction manual is very different. Exactly. Like the instructions, the cookbook, you know, the, the ingredients can be the same, but um, the recipes that you each, each cell in your body follows it can be completely different. What broad questions are you trying to answer with your work? Well, so I think there are many unanswered questions that regard the processing and function of the expression of RNAs in our cells. So while we have some basic understanding of major differences between the repertoire of RNAs that are present in your heart compared to your eye, we still don't completely understand the different functions they play and especially how in diseases, they're dysregulated. And even as a doctor, we don't really learn about maybe that level of detail. Do you think eventually the work you do might translate into different treatments for these diseases? I hope so. Um, you know, not it's not directly part of my work, but there's a very exciting field of RNA therapeutics that has been emerging. Um, so changing your DNA might be dangerous and very difficult. Um, and there's a new class of drugs that people are starting to experiment with and that are showing great promise actually in the clinic, which are delivery of RNA molecules rather than proteins or antibodies that have traditionally, or other small molecules that have been traditionally used as drugs. So this is a very exciting field. It has the promise of having very targeted um, therapeutic effects. So we're not trying to change the body's cookbook, we're just trying to change the way the body uses the cookbook and exactly, the recipes they make? Exactly, so if, you know, if your heart is making a particular kind of RNA, you can possibly, the hope is you can target um, the RNAs in your heart, but your brain isn't expressing those RNAs, so there's no danger of the off-target kind of side effects. Well, good luck with your work. Thank Dr. you. Dr. Salzman, thanks so much for joining thanks me here so today. Much.